I wonder how connected do you feel right now? Look at all these seats piled up in here. Um, because we can't all sit together on these seats week in, week out. Lots of people are feeling the distance from each other, aren't they? We're feeling the distance from church life. Do you feel like you don't belong at the moment? Um, you're not sure what you belong to or what it means to belong? Um, if that's you today, um, then know that you're not on your own. Um, but what does it mean to belong to church? What does it mean to be a Christian these days? Uh, are we all YouTube and Zoom Christians now? Is that going to be the case for the rest of our lives? Um, is this it now? Chairs left in here like this, not being sat on. Well, in the book of Acts, they st the church started with that amazing community, didn't it? It's music to our ears right now, sharing life together, everything in common. Loads of time together, eating together, being discipled together, praying together and growing under the great teaching of the apostles. Wouldn't it be great to get back to that? That perfect church life. Well, we have this view of, the, of that being how church always was and our need to get back to all that togetherness. These chairs back in that hall. Let's get back singing together. Now that will be good. Um, don't get me wrong and that's coming for us in different ways maybe not the singing yet um, but that original church didn't last did it in Acts chapter 7 you can read it for yourself Stephen one of the leaders of the church is stoned to death and his death kicks off a brutal wave of persecution that's like a bowling ball through the church in Jerusalem it scatters them out to Judea, Samaria, the towns around. They fear for their lives and they run like pins smashed down by a bowling ball. And that just got worse and worse and carried on. And so they kept being scattered further and further. That scattering feeling has been the experience of Christians for centuries, from the start of the church. Um, so... If that's you today, be encouraged that what you're feeling, your distance, your separation, your aloneness, you're not the first one to feel like that. And you probably won't be the last. Um, in that time, the apostles, they couldn't do YouTube videos, they couldn't do things like this, but they wrote letters, didn't they? And we've been looking at the letter of one Peter. Peter wrote his letter specifically to scattered churches, scattered Christians around their part of the world. Listen to today's section of that book. 1 Peter 2 verse 4. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message for which, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. So who are we? Peter writes this bit to remind scattered Christians who they are. He says, but you are. So who are we? We're not YouTube Christians, loners left in our homes to sit on Zoom at a distance. Peter says we are stones built on Jesus. Jesus is a living stone, not just a dead pile of rock, but a risen, living foundation for our lives together. Notice that it's not for everybody. People will reject him, be offended by him, disobey what he says. 
but you, saved by Jesus, are being built into a spiritual house together through him. Physically separated, but built together spiritually. What unites us, the reason we exist, the reason we keep doing these things, and the reason we want to be sat on these chairs again, is because we are a house, a people of God, being built together through Jesus, because of Jesus, for Jesus. We are built on Jesus and we are a people belonging to God. So you might feel separate, distanced, lonely, but what you feel and the truth about you and the truth about us as a church is very different. Verse 10. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Because God has saved you, because he's shown you his mercy, Christian, you are not on your own. Once you were not included in this, this church, together. But now you are saved into the people of God. So there is no such thing as a lone ranger Christian. It just doesn't exist. It doesn't make sense in the New Testament's way of describing a Christian. We are saved into God's people. You belong here together with us because you have been chosen by God. Did you hear those different phrases, the different pictures in verse 9? But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. Now we could preach a sermon on each of those. I'm not going to do that. Maybe take time today just to chew over what each of those means from uh, 2 Peter, uh, 1 Peter 2, verse 9. Have, have a chew over each of those images. What does that mean for you to be part of God's people? as each of those. But look what Peter says is the reason that we are all those people. We are God's people built on Jesus so that we may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful life, light. Because he saved us, we declare his praise by being together and being one spiritually. We together are are the way God is building his people on earth right now. Do you get how important that is? What you belong to? We are chosen by God. We represent God and we belong to him, his special possession. Because of his mercy, not because of anything we've done, not because we're so great, because we've got such nice chairs stacked up beautifully. Because of his mercy. We are his people, so we declare his praise by being together. We need to remember that truth in these days when it feels far away. We are a people, no matter how scattered we feel, no matter how distant and disconnected you feel, we are God's people. So how do we respond? What do we do? What does that actually look like in your day-to-day life? How does that change how you live today? Read, read on, chapter 2. Verse 11, dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. So how do we live scattered but together? Well, because we're scattered there are, there's more opportunity for sinful desires to grab hold, take root and spread like weeds. So Peter says, don't let them do that. Fight the war against those weeds, rip them out and then instead live good lives. Why? Because people are watching. The world is watching on. And one day they are going to stand before God. And when they stand before him and they see his glory, they're going to think, Hang on, I've seen this somewhere before. That Christian I knew, who was part of Lansdowne Church, they showed me some of that glory. They may disagree with us, just like they disagree with Jesus. We may cause them to stumble. We may offend them. But one day they will stand before Jesus and they will see his glory and they will remember that they saw that in us. 
because we live such good lives. That's incredible, isn't it? We declare the praises of God as we are his together. And as we live such good lives, people looking on will see the glory of God in us. So that's what we do today. As God's people scattered, live good lives because he has shown us his mercy. Have a great day.